In October of 1962, I was living in Columbus, Georgia, just outside Fort Benning. At the time, I was in the fifth grade at Morningside Elementary. During the time of the so-called Cuban Missile Crisis, my classmates and I practiced the classic duck and cover drills daily for the entire week of the crisis. The emergency drills ingrained in us a fear of the unknown. This was my first realization that my parents and teachers could not protect me from everything. Once a day, the alarm sounded for the 60 seconds drill, the same one we used for tornadoes. We kids got up from our desk and went into the hallway where we sat on the floor quietly until the drill was over. We had 60 seconds to leave our desk and get positioned in the hallway. And once an hour, we practiced the duck and cover drill where we rolled out of our chairs and then back up under our desk, covering up as we did. We had about five seconds to do that. We practiced this drill once an hour and we did it for over a week. It was a scary thing for kids to do. The fear stays with you. During that week in October, all of our local highways were clogged with military convoys and the train tracks were filled with troop and equipment movements headed south into Florida. It seemed like every army truck, tank, and artillery piece in the country was headed to Florida. That's because the U.S. expected a land invasion from Cuba. Fortunately, that invasion never happened. On one of my first trips to Russia, after the collapse of the former Soviet Union, I was telling this story around the campfire one night on the shores of Lake Baikal in Siberia. One of my Russian hosts, Vadim Shakarov, a professor of history at Irkutsk National University, was sitting beside the campfire with me. Vadim is my age, and he told of doing the exact same drills at his school in Russia during that week in 1962. He told me that he and his Russian classmates feared our American missiles and were terrified that they might die. I told him that the feeling was mutual that my classmates and I had feared a premature death by Soviet missiles. After talking about our shared experiences, Vadim and I decided that we would celebrate the decision of John F. Kennedy and Nikita Khrushchev not to take our nations to war that week in October of 1962. We drank a vodka toast and then shook hands in the most ceremonial manner we could muster, as if we were those two leaders, Presidents Kennedy and Khrushchev. We did not really represent those two leaders, though. We represented the children of 1962. We were just two of the many millions of school kids who were terrified during that time, Russian and American.